is given by inspiration of God. And therefore, there's no part of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, prophecy or history that the Holy Ghost does not understand. And therefore, because he was full of the Holy Ghost, he just asked him, do you understand what you are reading? And then he says, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him and the place of the scripture which he read was this he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before a sharer it says so opened he not his mouth and in his humiliation his judgment was taken away and who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, I'm pleading with you, I beseech you, of whom speaketh the prophet's face of himself, of some other man. And Philip opened his mouth, open your mouth, and he will feel it. I said, open your mouth, and he will feel it. The man had read the scriptures, and he did not understand. And he said, of whom is the man, this prophet, saying this, of himself, of another man? And without, uh, you know, Philip saying, I'm, I'm coming. Let me go for a concordance. I'm coming. Let me go for, you know, a Bible study outline. I'm coming. Let me go and check up all those commentaries. Immediately, the interpretation came. Immediately, interpretation will come to you. Illumination will come to you. Understanding will come to you isn't that what jesus said that when the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth that's what is happening here that the spirit of god guided him to all truth and then philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him jesus and as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what does seem that me to be baptized even neighbor water baptism already and philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he answered and said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god how did he believe that he was reading isaiah isaiah chapter 53 and see from that isaiah chapter 53 when philip opened his mouth the holy ghost directed him to say jesus is the son of god and Jesus is our Savior. And if you want eternal life and forgiveness, you want to be born again, this is the only way. When he came to the water, then he said, Am I not ready to baptize in water? See that an immediate result, your evangelism will become faster, will become more productive because it is done in the power of the Holy Ghost. And then he says, And they went, and when they were come out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. See that experience I'm talking about. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. He did not even need a bicycle, a motorcycle, a cab, a taxi, a bus, an aeroplane. He says the spirit of God caught him away. And then we're told that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Azotus. Because there was a kind of temporary rapture for that one feeling. Because of the Spirit of God upon his life. Just took him away and landed him in another place. I'm saying that you're going to begin to experience some experiences that you have never thought about. Because something new is coming upon your life. You, you know, uh, imagine this now. Here is Philip. Let's say somebody wants to, wanted to harm Philip and is filled with the Holy Ghost. Inside him, saturated with the Holy Ghost. All around him, the fire of the Holy Ghost. And somebody wanted to harm him. Mm. The Holy Spirit will just take him and take him to another place. You can never catch that man. Holy Ghost man, you'll never catch them. And when you become tonight, tonight, I said tonight, tonight, I said tonight, tonight, when you become Holy Ghost man, Holy Ghost woman, where are you? Holy Ghost man, Holy Ghost woman, they will never catch you again in Jesus' name. Before they touch you like this, the Holy Ghost has transported you to another place. Let me come now to point number three, expecting the promised baptism of the Holy Spirit. Expecting. Expecting. The expectation of the righteous shall not be disappointed. And your expectation shall not be disappointed tonight in Jesus' name. 
expecting the promised baptism of the Spirit. I'm, I'm looking at Matthew chapter 3 again. Why were those disciples expecting? And why today are you expecting? What brings expectation? Oh, because of the promise. When they heard the promise from John the Baptist that he is coming, he is coming, he is coming. He is the one that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Immediately they became expectant. Look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than i whose shoes i have not worthy to bear and he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire can i explain this to you john the baptist was saying i'm baptizing with water he is going to baptize with the holy ghost how do i baptize with water they come to me how will he baptize with the ghost you come to him and when they come to me then they surrender themselves they don't stiffen up their legs and arms they surrender they make everything loose and then john is able to take them into the river and bring them again they surrender submit completely into the hands of john how do you get baptized in the holy ghost you come to the lord you surrender totally you are not stiffening yourself you're not hardening yourself you don't say i will not i will not do that when you surrender yourself like they surrender themselves to john you surrender yourself to the lord jesus christ your heart surrendered your tongue surrendered your arms surrendered your body surrendered and say lord i am thine thine alone and thine forever and you can do with me whatever you want the holy ghost will come upon you and the moment you surrender to the lord jesus christ like they surrender to john the baptist for what i baptize him that holy ghost tonight is your portion that power is your portion that fire is your portion i'm reading now from john john chapter 7 john chapter 7 and i'm reading there from verse 37 john chapter 7 verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink you see that that's all you need if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink that what thirst means are to desire you remember when you are thirsty it's like that's what you're looking for and if somebody is trying to get to attention i'm sorry I'm, I'm just thirsty i must drink water now it's like you know everything my throat is dry my everything is dry i need that water right now and then you're searching you're searching and when you get pure water and when you get that clean water and you begin to drink you just drink you don't have to be taught how to drink how will i drink just get thirsty and then we give you that glass of water and then you begin to drink the same way you desire the holy ghost you are passionate about the Holy Ghost. Say, if I had the Holy Ghost, I will know how to preach. If I know the Holy, I have the Holy Ghost, I'll know how to pray. If I have the Holy Ghost, I'll be able to do miracles. If I have the Holy Ghost, the work of God will prosper in my hand. If I have the Holy Ghost, there will be no difficulty I will not be able to resolve. If I have the Holy Ghost, there will be nothing in the scriptures that will be so tied up. I will not understand. I need this Holy Ghost. I need His light. I need His power. I need His illumination i need this fire i need this zeal i need this enthusiasm i need this courage i need this strength i am thirsty and jesus said if any man says let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me thank god i believe in jesus i said i believe in jesus it is yours tonight in jesus name he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water rivers of living water rivers of living water but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the holy ghost was not given at that time because jesus was not yet glorified but jesus is now glorified and therefore that promise is coming upon you tonight in jesus name chapter 14 john chapter 14 john chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 15 john chapter 14 verse 15 if you love me keep my commandments thank god you're supposed to are saved that's what we're doing and when you're sanctified properly and immediately you keep the commandments of the lord and with all your heart joyfully your delight in keeping the commandments of the lord and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth error will never influence you anymore
falsehood will not be able to take hold of your heart anymore because there will be that, you know, the teacher, divine teacher, the comforter, the spirit of truth is living on the inside of you. And when error comes like this, the spirit of truth in your heart will say, that is error, that is deception, that is falsehood. And those false people, they'll never be able to catch you with their false doctrine when you have the spirit of truth abiding in your heart. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but she know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. We're reading now from John chapter 16. John chapter 16. I'm reading from John chapter 16. It says in John chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 7. John chapter 16 verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you. It is profitable for you. It is better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He has gone to heaven. He's seated right now on the right hand of majesty on high. He's sending the Holy Ghost to us tonight in Jesus' name. Verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. You know, there's some people they say, I've been in the church for such a long time. But this doctrine of the rapture, I don't understand. Great tribulation, I don't understand. Antichrist, I don't understand. The great white throne judgment, I don't understand. You know, when the Holy Ghost comes, all those things you find difficult. You have learned, you have learned, you have learned, you need to understand. It says, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you, he will show you, he will show you things to come. Your night has come. I said your night has come. When are you going to have the Holy Ghost? When are you going to baptize the Holy Ghost? Look at this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 39. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise is unto you. For the promise is unto you. For the promise is unto you. You have a promise specially ready made for you tonight. For the promise is unto you. Power is for you. That authority is for you. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Lukewarmness will be a sin of the past. When the Holy Ghost comes and His fire comes in your heart, in your life, and in your family, all that lukewarmness and the coldness, all that is gone forever in Jesus' name. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to your children, and to your children. Even the children, young people here tonight, get ready. Holy Ghost is coming upon you in Jesus' name. And to all that are far off, all are far off. You know, in this retreat, we are here, we are near, and we have some locations over there, over there, far away, in different parts of our country. And the promise is unto you who are here, unto the children, and then unto those who are far off in all the countries where we are having this retreat together tonight. Holy Ghost is going to come upon everyone. And only the Holy Ghost will move everywhere because to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord. Lord our God shall call. Thank God I'm ready. I said, thank God I'm ready. Luke chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 9. Luke chapter 11, we're looking at verse 9. Luke chapter 11, we're looking at verse 9. This is yours. This is yours. I praise God for you tonight. What a glorious day for you to be alive because the Holy Ghost is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from Luke chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, 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 Everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? 
Or if he shall ask a fish, will he give him for a fish? Will he give him a, a, a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? What's the answer? No. You know, some people say, if I ask for the Holy Spirit, what if I have evil spirit? Impossible. You're asking God. You're asking the Father. You are protected from evil spirit. Evil spirit will never come your way in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, how much more easily, how much more readily, how much more instantaneously shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. He will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Will he give some and not give others? Who are going to receive tonight? The Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Why don't you stand up? This is your day. This is your day. The special favor of the Lord is upon your life. The Lord has been waiting for you for this time that you will ask him how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Ask, it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock it shall be open unto you everyone that asketh everyone that asketh everyone that asketh everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open the door is open for you tonight the power of the holy ghost coming upon you the power of the holy ghost coming upon you you are a child of god you are a daughter of god you are a son of god you are in the kingdom already and the lord is saying this is your privilege this is your right this is my provision for you the lord jesus christ is seated on the right hand of majesty on high and is pouring out the holy ghost is pouring out the holy ghost is pouring out the holy ghost power authority dynamite vision revelation illumination understanding of the holy ghost and the fire and the zeal and the enthusiasm and the courage of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you right now. Coming upon you right now. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost has come. The Holy Ghost has come. The Holy Spirit has come. The dynamite has come. The power has come empowered by his spirit empowered by his spirit energized by his spirit let him saturate you tonight is there just ask is there just ask is there